Well, hello everybody out there in uh, YouTube land. So, Tim Time here. If you hear all the noise, the air conditioner's running beside me and the birds upstairs screaming and yelling. And uh, just wanted to do a quick video and show you something I was working on. It's just a 40 meter dipole and basically it was, where is it? it was, Larry got me started on it. Uh, I had the gap antenna that I put up and I think I showed you in the, one of the episodes and we were having an issue with just trying to communicate. We're only about a hundred miles away from each other and uh, it, you know how RF goes. Sometimes you can do that, sometimes you can't. So I'm looking up at basically how I could do the communications without having so much skip. You know, the, the signal would be skipping or it wouldn't be, I didn't want it to skip. So the, new, the term they use now for that is near vertical incident sky wave. And almost your signal goes straight up and showers back down, almost straight down. And you have a, uh, your signal, your skip zone isn't quite as large. So with this antenna, you couldn't maybe talk to Europe, but I could probably hit everything within about three states, maybe, maybe less, maybe more. Uh, Anyhow, I put one up yesterday, and the idea is basically use a dipole, but don't put it very high. Uh, so I'm using 40 meters, it's about six feet in the air, and I'll, I'll show you. And it was made, it was pretty much just thrown together with scraps of wire and junk that I found laying around. And uh, I'll take that and give you the tour. Don't even have a, a, uh, a ballon on it, a one to one ballon, which I'd like to put on it, but I just was curious to get it out and see if it worked. And we actually used it yesterday. With, with very good results. I made a couple of contacts with Parks on the Air, and I was able to talk to Larry. Uh, we talked for a good long time, not a good long time. We talked for maybe 10, 15 minutes uh, with, without any issues, uh, and the band was even still a little bit noisy. So uh, I'm gonna take you out and show you the antenna, and then uh, maybe we'll talk about putting a ballon on it, and running some additional tests with it. So what is it with this thing and Larry? I have no idea. He has some type of fixation on it and he just really lack, cracks up whenever I put it in video. So here's to you, Larry. All right, so here it is on the uh, analyzer and I don't really have good lighting on this analyzer and there's no backup lights, but it's at 7022, oh, I don't know. What we're going to do is watch down here. You can see the. Uh, try to get that in a little bit more light for you. 1.2. Hang on one second. Maybe that'll give us a little bit more light. Get my fingers out of the way here. So let's see. You can see. Let me see if I zoom in here a little bit. Well, since we can see that, if it'll focus. All right, the SWR is 1.2, it's 7037, we'll go down, even below 7, at 6.7 it's 2, and it comes up and goes the whole way through here, and let's see, go back to 7.304, it's still around 2. And of course, that would easily be tuned with the antenna tuner, uh, if needed at all. All right, so there it is. And as you can see, there's the ground, and I'm going to walk right over to it. So it's right here in my hand. So, I don't know, maybe a couple inches over six feet off the ground. This is not a ballon. It is just uh, been beaten by flies. It was going to be a ballon. I'll explain that later. I got to get away from the flies. But I had some uh, wire here that I ran through there. And you'll see it goes over this way and just tucked into some trees. And then it meets a piece of 14 2 house wiring. Well, just 14 now. It's not 14 2 goes over there and it's tucked along hanging off the railing and if you follow it this way it just shoots up in here and it goes along 
and it just hung over the tree branch right over in there. You can see where it where it comes down, but uh, no real thought or planning into this. Just kind of threw it up to see how it works, and uh, like I said about that with with that. I had bought that and I put it together and I was going to put a ballon in it, but the, uh, the ballon that I got was actually two and a half inches or two and a quarter. Uh, so it wouldn't fit in there, not the, the coil that I got to wind the uh, the ballon on. So a ferroid, ferroid toroid and it's 2.4 inches or something. So that didn't work. So I threw it together anyhow. So this is running without any uh, any type of one-to-one -one ballon on it right now but uh, as you can see the match works okay and it does seem to work fine but I think to just eliminate any possibility of getting some stray RF and to get the most out of the antenna I will probably make a ballon and change that out and put a ballon in there and maybe even use some better wire just because I'm so impressed with how well it works all right so I'm going to try and tune into a, a couple of things just zoom up and down the band there we'll start at uh, 7.175 and go up to about 7.3 because uh, that's the general portion of the band where I'm talking to Larry on now this is with the uh, the dive pool itself and again like I said there's there's no uh, as of yet there's no ballon and uh, I was gonna make a quick one and it was just everything is so darn expensive right now so anyhow, that's a story for another day. A communication like this, but imagine 50 years ago trying to do stuff like this, how exciting it would be when you could actually make the contact or who all could join your, your little net uh, or your ragju time. Uh, all right, well, here goes the first shot at a homemade one-to-one -one ballon around the ferrite and it's got about 12 turns of number 18 wire well it has 12 turns of number 18 wire wire might be a little bit long yet I don't know if I'm going to keep it in this box that's why I didn't quite cut them down at least the ends the coax ends real short come right off there these ends are a bit long and they're probably going to cause some interference but uh, I'm just kind of curious to put it on there and see but I think I might use a square box because it kind of doesn't sit in here very well and I had to grind down the sides here. This is just a regular ceiling electrical box. But um, I have put our TV on it where I ground the sides down because it went right through. Right through. Uh, and just stuck a couple of bolts out the side to clip my antenna to and give it a try. So we'll see how it works. There's plenty of videos on YouTube about making your own uh, ballon, a uh, one-to-one one ballon, and what all parts they suggest using. This this should be good for HF. And uh, well, we'll give it a try and see what happens. I really, I'm not really sure how I want to test it. I think the first thing I'll do is maybe just throw up the field strength meter and see if it makes any difference outside whatsoever, running without the ballon, and then I'll cut that uh, original connection out put this on and clip the wires to the ends. Alrighty, turn that on. So to minimize any interference, uh, pick the frequency that's not really in use and uh, I knocked it down to about, about 20 watts. So this is with the old uh, antenna, the um, dipole with no ballon or anything in it and we'll see we'll get that put on the SWR setting on the radio and let's see if you can see that we'll zoom in I don't know how accurate of a test this is going to be but we'll see what happens so without the antenna tuner it's 1 to 1.5 with the antenna tuner it's about 1 to 1.1, 1, .1, 1 to 1, 1 1.15 or something's way down. All right, so I'm going to cut out that thing that's there and put this in its place, and uh, I'll be back. As Arnold Schwarzenegger says, I'll be back.
be differently. All right. Okay, you can push the send button. So, so it's a little bit over 1.5. Okay, unpush the send button. The button is unpushed. Thank you for your assistance. Your paycheck will be sent in the mail. All right, I don't know if that was an accurate test or not, but now I'm gonna swap over the uh, and put the ballon in, see what we get. All right, so there's the pretend ballon. That there's nothing inside. I always get attacked by these darn deer flies over here. So let me swap that, I'll pull that off, I'll cut those wires out of it, and put this guy in its place. Give me a few minutes. All right, there it is in all of its glory. Uh, the frequency might have changed a little bit because when I cut the wires off, I might have taken an inch or so off each side. We'll see how that works out. Uh, and see what we get. We'll try it on the field strength, and then maybe we'll try and make some contacts later on, too. See how it works. All right, we're in place. All right, Sam, we are in place. You can push the button. You can unpush the button. And it's unpushed over. Oops, sorry. So I didn't really see much of a change one way or another. And as I said, I don't know if I really expect it to be an accurate test or not. It would have been nicer to uh, maybe watch it on a spectrum analyzer or something and see if it was putting out some kind of craziness. But, uh, so that's it, and we'll have to try it out now with the ballon in to see if we notice any difference or if anybody notices any difference on us. All right, so this video is going to be all pieced together, and it's been going on long enough. Uh, maybe I'll see if Larry's around and get, get a chance to talk to him. Now, I did make uh, make another Parks on the Air contact. It was on the other side of the state, out uh, near Lehigh County, that area. That's all the way on the other side of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is a pretty wide state, so. Uh, but again, with the same the uh, same dipole I've been using and everything, the performance of it is working pretty good. I don't know if it's really doing exactly what I had expected it to do as far as the uh, near vertical incident uh, skyway. But let's see what happens. Maybe Larry comes on. We'll see how things are working. Uh, if uh, we can hear him, but. A couple things I want to do is I kind of have to fine tune that uh, ballon that I made a little bit, even out the uh, the coils. As you can see, they kind of got muffed up a little bit when I was sliding it into the uh, into the housing that it's in. That'll be no problem to just move them down. So they're all about equal distance away all the way around. And then uh, I want to cut the the leaves and make them just long enough that they can reach the connector. But again, I don't know if I'm going to keep that. We'll see if I decide to keep that. But anyhow, uh, thanks for watching. And if by the time I'm done editing this video and I put it on, there might be some stuff on there of making some contacts with it and maybe changing it around to hear how it works. Uh, the difference with close range communications on 40 meters using that versus the uh, the vertical, the gap antenna. So let's see. Um, one thing I did want to note is that the gap, that uh, that ring at the bottom, it's not a ring, it's a square at the bottom, that is allegedly the 40 meter antenna anyhow. And they recommend that the gap be mounted around like 7 to 10 feet or so off the ground, so it doesn't have to be super high. So my question is, does that act like a uh, some type of a dipole, but it's not very high off the ground? It was kind of interesting when I was reading about that on the gap. So. Uh, if that's the case, then I'm kind of mimicking that because I'm about a little bit, maybe maybe a foot or two lower than that would be. Anyhow. Uh, so, uh, what kind of signal am I giving you down there, Larry? Yeah, yeah, you too. Nice and uh, 
again with the background noise always it seems, but uh, your signal is definitely 100% readable. Compared to every other time that we've ever tried this, well, we're unsuccessful or barely successful. This is actually like a real fast station. Yeah, I could hear people below us and above us, and they were getting closer and closer. Yeah, I know. It was, uh, I found this, I found this patch of band. Maybe it's even a little higher than that, but this, this will be just fine, I think. It seems quiet enough. Yeah, definitely a good signal. Yeah, this is an old one though. This is a uh, 1980s vintage. Oh wow. Uh, I mean, well, what can you tell me about that? I mean, I, I, I've heard Kenwood make some pretty good radios. Is that the only HF radio you got, or do you have multiple? Oh no, I have three of them. I have I have a 590. That's a, a newer one. That's only about three or four years old. Uh, it's a Kenwood. And then I have the that Icom that I fixed. I have those upstairs. I think that's all the HF radios I have. I have a uh, a Kenwood two meter, um, and I don't. I have no portable Kenwoods. Okay, well, 1980s vintage. I mean, that's, um, that's, that's obviously a technology that works. It's probably lacking some of the the more modern features. I'm guessing. I mean, I'm with them. What kind of changes has there been since the 80s? Okay, I'm sorry. I forgot. Also. Uh, I have an 820, another Kenwood 820. That's that's an earlier 80s. That actually uses vacuum tube for driver and final for that radio. Um, and then that one, when you have the vacuum tubes, they're a little bit tougher. You have to kind of tune each frequency you go to, kind of like you do with your antenna tuner. This one here is uh, it's all solid state. It uh, leaves a lot. Doesn't have any type of digital filtering or anything in it. Well, it's something else I should add here. It would help if both stations or if other stations you're talking to in the NVIS mode were using the same type of mode because if I'm showering around everybody with uh, RF and somebody else has an antenna that's up to skip, he or she may hear me, but I may not hear them because their skip is going over me. So. Just kind of something to think about too. I was just kind of rationalizing that in my head, but uh, I would think that uh, kind of like back in the old days with you hear people in the CB they used to use the flat side of the antenna, <coughs> and a lot of ham operators still use vertical and horizontal polarization. But uh, it definitely seems to make a difference if both persons are using the same uh, polarization or the same mode. Thanks for watching. Take care and have fun.